it's always a party at Patchworks. Let's get this party started. Woot, woot. Hi, everyone. This is Julie from Patchworks, and I am so excited that you're joining us for another Must Sew TV here on Thursday night. Now, tonight, our video is pre recorded because I'm probably eating cake right now. Yay, it's my birthday. Woot, woot. So, it's going to be a super extra fun night tonight. We are talking about the Aurifil Club and the wonderful orange Sumatran Tiger color box today. The block, the embroidery design, as well as a little color lesson, which I know a lot of you have been asking for. So, let's take a peek and see what you get in this month's club. So this month for club, you are going to get this gorgeous collection of thread. It is colors 2214, 1133, and 1104. Three beautiful coordinated dark, medium, and light fabrics. And then we have the endangered species Block of the Month printed pattern from Cassandra Beaver. Now, talking about the Sumatran Tiger, there are only 400 Sumatran Tigers, actually less than 400 in the world. And since they are part of the most critically endangered species, Orphil, in collaboration with the Earth League International, encourages you to follow up with the Earth League International to find out more information on how you can get involved each month for the animals. We are going to take a peek at the beautiful picture of this month's block that Cassandra put together. Now keep in mind I've been putting a grunge background on all of mine. But today we are, are going to be looking at Cassandra's work and she switched things up and she used a beautiful lime green for her background. And if we can look at this block, you can see that we are using all three colors of the orange. We are using the lavender from a previous month. You might have that in your stash for some shading there. If you prefer to use something other than the light lavender and the plum and the rose, by all means, you can go ahead and do that. And then you're using some white and black to give in a little bit more uh, drama there. Now, we have definitely been given a little bit of a break in the past couple of months, especially with the whale shark where we had less pieces. This month we're going to jump back in and we have definitely a few pieces to be able to make this magnificent block. So this is our 16 inch Sumatran Tiger paper piece block. Now we're going to take a peek at the embroidered design that we have that we have available. So the embroidered design is using the 40 weight threads from the box. And the pattern is available in all popular formats. As an extra bonus, we're going to be including a link for some quilting tips from Holly Ann Knight of Str String and Story, where she is sharing how to quilt a wonky block. So as you're working with these paper pieced blocks, you can definitely imagine, if you haven't personally experienced, that, you know, putting things together with all these seams may have a little bit more bulk along the way, and maybe things are a little wonky, wonky or wavy and you want to be able to ease them in. So she uses a technique called massage quilting and you will see the link here below so that you can follow her advice as to how to better quilt this. And when you're quilting it, the first tip is to 
ditch it down or otherwise frame it down. So the first thing that you would do is you would actually do a frame around the whole, the outside of the, you would do a frame around the outside of your tiger and then you would work on the outside and then on the inside. So she has a super cool, super short video. It's about six minutes and it is a little high speed look at how she goes about tackling that. So if you're gonna be working with each of the blocks in a small way, turning it into a wall hanging or a pillow, it is a great exercise. She also offers instruction on how to simply or more complicated pr pr create a quilting plan for the block. Let's hop into our color story. So if you haven't played with any color tools, we have two fantastic color tools in the store. And it is the Studio Color Wheel, and then we have the 3-in-1 Color Tool. These are designed by Joan Wolfram for C&T Publishing. Now Joan has been in the industry for a very long time and she is considered to be one of the masters of color in our industry. And I love these tools. These tools have uh, are copyrighted in 2011 and 2010 and I think there was a version before that. I don't have the history on that. I have an open copy here and I just wanna show you. So for the color wheel, it's a poster. It's 28 by 28 and it is large. There are two sides of it. The first side is a beautiful photograph of a 24 wedge color wheel. And the flip side, let me see if I can center this for you. Is this centered better, Frank? This is a 24, more, 24 wedge more technical wheel. Great to pin up on the wall or you can use it in your sewing room. So this coordinates with this little flippy book and this flippy book has an introduction and then 24 pages why 24? Well, there's one page for each of the spokes on here. And then you also have a red and green value finder, which is super cool. So let's back up a second. 24 spokes on the color wheel. Wait, there's 24 colors? I thought there were only six colors in the rainbow. So this happens to be a print color wheel. So it starts with three colors. You have cyan, magenta, and yellow, and then it jumps out to six, okay? And so the six would be more what we think of as the colors where you go violet, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. Then you can hop out to 12, where you find the spaces in between each of those six, out to the 24. Now Joan knows that naming colors can be incredibly confusing. I mean, you look at some of the Hoffman 1895 batiks and there's a color named Julie and there's a color named Frank. Like, oh my goodness, what would the color Frank be? I don't know, Frank's favorite color is purple. No, not purple, it's blue. And I think Frank is purple. And so what Joan has done is she has Na she's numbered each of these. So she started with yellow with the number one and then gone clockwise around the wheel to number 24. And that way, if you're in a classroom setting or if you're talking with another quilter, you can say, so on wedge number two, and you both are talking about the exact same color. So that's what this is about. Inside of here, let's take a peek overhead on this particular wheel. We're just going to be looking more at the number one here. And there are several different 
images here. So what is this? It's talking about the different color themes you could use. So in general, there are four different color themes. You would have, if you are not doing a monochromatic, that would just be the whole wedge. So here you have complementary, and complementary is across the color wheel. So with yellow, it would be yellow and violet. Then we have one here that's called analogous. So analogous is if you want to have a color theme with yellow and its friends. Combining the complementary and analogous, you have something called split complementary. So split complementary, you have two options, one where you take your main color and you add an accent across the way. So friends of yellow and an accent across the way. Or if you want yellow to be that spark, you can choose a complement, I'm sorry, an analogous theme of what's across from yellow and then just hit it with an accent of your yellow across the way. And then we have what is called triadic. So triadic, what does that mean? Three. And that is splitting the color wheel in thirds. Of course, there's also the rainbow or spectrum option where you include everything in the color wheel. If we look at this book, it's super cool because Joan's gone ahead and she shows you the pure color. Okay, so the pure color would be what's up at the top here. The tints, so a tint is a fancy word for when you make it lighter with white. And then if you chose to make a shade where you added black to it, okay? And then of course you could tone the whole thing down with any of these adding gray to it. <gasps> and then you come up with all of these. Oh my goodness. So it's pretty cool how it's all put together here. Now you're like, Julie, I, I don't wanna know this much detail about it. I just want to play with some fabric. So I'm going to, now that I've introduced you to some basic tools, we're going to look at how this plays with an orange inspired fabric. If you are going to pick out fabric in the store, I often, rec and you don't know where to start, I say, you know what? Why don't you walk around the shop and pick one fabric that inspires you? And typically people have no problem follow finding that. And I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. If you have a challenge with that, and you're asking me to help you find that very first fabric, I take a look and see what color shirt you're wearing. And then I pick out a fabric that I think might suit you based on the shirt that you're wearing. And even if I don't pick one that matches your shirt, it is so interesting to see how many, many quilters gravitate towards what they're wearing as the selection for what color they want to choose and work with for the day. And that can change from day to day, week to week, month to month, because as quilters, we just love color. So I'm going to take a bold and beautiful K fabric here, K facet. Oh, it's luscious. It's inspired by orange and orange we can think of as bright, citrusy, summery, bold. And there's a lot of orange in this undertone. Now, if you're gonna be working with fabric, let's look overhead. And I wanna also tell you another great quilt shop owner hack that I have here. Okay, when working with fabrics and trying to see what goes with what, if you look here, we have these color dots on the selvage. Okay, so these color dots 
uh, have a couple different purposes. In the printing world, when you're printing the fabric, these are screen registration dots, okay? So, interestingly enough here, there are 12 different screens and the fancy machines somehow magically line things up as they move through the conveyor to line things up along here. And then as each screen hits it in its successive order, it drops down the color. So the first color to go is number one and then the second color to go is here. So that is how screen printed things are printed. So I have gone ahead and I have made a, a pull of solids okay so that we can look at this beautiful piece of fabric and we can talk about what color scheme this gorgeous piece of K fabric follows okay so I'm gonna put this aside for a second or put it up here so that we can just see a little bit and I have numbered them, so this is, goes through the numbers 1 through 12. They really have no other significance other than they match up to the color dots that I found. So let's put them in an order of sorts, okay? So let's take a peek here. I'm going to put my reds together, an orange, and then I'm going to have pinks over here. And here we go. Let's see, what do you think? Like that. And then we go more purple. And then blue. And then our green. All right, so maybe kind of, sort of. And the other thing, too, is if you're looking at things, it could be that some of these are actually shades of the same color. But for this purpose, we're just arranging them in a sort of spectrum here. I'm going to take a peek at my color wheel. And let's rotate them here. And I'm going to pull out my color tool, right? Because if we look at orange, let's just say orange here. Okay, so if we look at orange, which is the color that we used, you can see that an analogous color story could be this yellow-orange all the way down to fuchsia. Okay, doesn't that kind of look like that? So this could be an analogous, and then what is across from this? Well, it would be blue. Nah, did I really have blue per se? I guess a little bit. But what do I really have? I have kind of this complement, this analogous here. And then I have my green over here. And my violet over there. And then Kaif is just the color master. So he decided to throw in an accent that was that split complementary. Okay. Do you see that? So pretty cool. Now, when you're working with a when you are working with a bold fabric like this. Oftentimes, you're not simply pairing it with solids. But what I like to do is that if we're having a challenge finding fabrics that go with it, the first thing that we do is we go to the color dots. Absolute first thing that we do. Rather than trying to match the shade up here, because we could be blending, and it's harder to see this isolated color versus the color of where it lands in here. Does that make sense? Okay, so our first trivia question for tonight, and you have until Friday evening to answer this, and your prize 
will be some exciting goodie from our goodie bag. And the question is, what do we call these dots on the selvage? What do we call these dots on the selvage? Good luck. All right. So the next color that we're going to look at, because we still are going to be looking at our orange. I liked orange's inspiration to see some other orange things. And I have to pull a couple of these guys out quick because I used the same swatch twice. I cheated. Okay, let's put this guy aside. Now we're going to look at a very different look at orange. So sometimes with orange, we think seasonal. We think harvest. And I love this Alexander Henry piece. It's called Turkey Day. It's an older print uh, that's been reprinted that I just love. I mean, this would even be fantastic for a kaleidoscope type quilt. But anyhow, I digress. These gorgeous turkeys, let's look at the selvage dots. We have 13 registration marks here. Okay. And let's look at the pull. So. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And I added white because they left in non-printed space. So they didn't print white. They left white space. But I included that as 14 since it was an element in, an actual printed element in the design. Okay, so black and white are not on the color wheel. You might say, Julie, you're picking neutrals out. Why don't you take the brown away as well? And I'll say, oh, but wait, because brown is actually, the root color of brown is orange. And so that's pretty cool. I never really thought about that before I took over the shop, that brown was actually orange. So let's take a peek at this again, okay? So... We'll move away our gorgeous turkeys. And let's see here. So here we have some yellow and some yellow orange. Gets into some burgundy, pink. We have some taupe and some brown. are pretty close. Probably the red goes here. And you know, if we were looking at things, as we were saying, these guys here are on this spoke, okay? These potentially are as well. So if we look at that, that we have shades, and depending on where we place these or what exact ones, I don't have the exact printing printed colors in front of me so these could end up here potentially if they were more red versus the orange so this is clearly analogous okay can i see here analogous and then we pop our blue which is across 
You see this better? So it's a cross, and so this is a split complementary. Add in your black and white for accent. If you'd add white to any pure color, you'd have a tint. If you add black to any pure color, you'd have a shade. So, question is, if you add white to any color, what do you end up with? You will also be winning some amazing prize from the goodie bag. We'll just take one more peek at the really cool Turkey Time fabric. So what do you think? Is this interesting? Learning about the color themes that appear in different prints? If you'd be going and picking out fabrics, you would probably be choosing some tonals to go along with it. And um, when you're choosing the tonals, we like to work with different sizes and scales. And it depends, something that is more contemporary like this, you simply may be pulling some solids to go with it. All very interesting. So, orange is a very, very now color. And what I did now is I just decided to pull some current oranges that we've looked at in some newer fabrics that we've seen recently and showing you how they all go together and you never thought, maybe you didn't think about them as being orange focused and how orange is a today color. So a good one that's always um, a classic here, and I don't wanna say it's new, 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 but the rainbow theme, which of course includes orange, is something that's still popular and incredibly popular in quilting. You have some all over things, but we do have some other fabrics that we can show you overhead that we are looking at that are classics, rainbow, and so Eric Carle, basic rainbow, and a lot of juvenile prints happen to have a lot of pure color. So the pure color are the outside spokes on a color wheel. Orange also evokes some seasonal themes and the seasonal looks can be shades like these, these, these beautiful fabrics here that are harvest-like, that we have a strong orange presence here. When we think about Halloween, you have that classic triadic color scheme where you have the bold green, purple, and orange. And of course, black and white just pops everything for a while I was going through a kick and I had some solid black in every single quilt that we were making here at the store. If we're gonna talk about more stylized orange, we can look back at our penguins here and our penguin holiday. So this orange here that's the rust really is, you have that, it's that pop with the monochromatic neutrals here of the grayscale. Definitely very interesting. This would be considered super trendy and orange, even though it is a toned down orange, is very interesting here for this color scheme. This print here, it's pretty wild that you have your orange, pink, and then, so this is a complementary because you have your orange and your blue, right? 
maybe split complementary because the orange and your pink are next to each other. And I just have to share two brand brand news that have come in. Two totally different lines that even look like they could go together here. So we have Songbook from Fancy That Designs and you can see here the orange undertone in our pink here and then in the new art gallery uh, Cozy and Magical there's definitely strong orange in this particular design and you can see the colors work really super well together. So I hope you enjoyed that mini lesson on colors in fabric. Let me know if content like that is interesting and if you'd like more content like that. We definitely like to provide a little bit of extra education in our videos here to be able to help you become better quilters and when you're better quilters you enjoy the art more and that is great for everybody. You have all been making such really awesome things and I want to share a little bit of show and tell with you today that was shared to our Patchworks party. If you haven't already joined, make sure that you hop on to become a member of our Patchworks Party Facebook group. All you need to do is click the uh, click on the group, answer a couple questions, and we'll make sure to add you right in so that you can share with your friends all the great things that you've been doing. So let's take a peek and see what you have been up to. So first up, Jackie has been working on her paper pieced animals and she finished the whale shark here. She has been doing two of each of the animals and that's just amazing. Next up, I would like to share, I'm just gonna peek at the name here so that I can see it and that is is it Eileen or Diane? It is Eileen. So Eileen, you did a really great iguana. And then we are going to look and see Eileen also did her whale shark. So she's completely caught up. So great job, Eileen. And then Diane has been working as well and this is her whale shark. And then she has an iguana as well. So I love how you've been making your backgrounds a little scrappier, so super cool. And Sally, you shared a picture of you sewing at the lake. I forgot to grab that one here, but I would like to see where all of you have been setting up your machine this summer. If you have never sewn outside, I highly encourage you to do so because it's a lot of fun. And especially when the weather's nice, uh, it's just really cool. Whether you're on your own patio outside your door, even if it's looking out onto the court in your condo complex, always fun to get some fresh air and get a different perspective while you're sewing. So we're going to do a little drawing for the show and tell. And today, one of the lucky people is going to get a 12 weight spool of the tw color 2021. Oh, and one other thing I have to show you here, I'm just going to hold up, is if you haven't been to the store, Jackie has been stitching out an extra animal every single month for us. So this is her whale shark and thank you so much Jackie. I'm so excited to be able to share that stitched out animals with all of you. Make sure to check them out in store. They are on the wall behind the register. Okay so let's see who is going to be the lucky winner. And Diane, congratulations, you have won a spool of 12 weight color 2021. Uh, 
I do want to share with you, we started with CAFE. And I want to let you know that we are going to be starting officially next week. So that is August 4th. We're going to be starting the CAFE quilt along, which is Gather No Moss. And I'm going to grab two of the kits here. I know I've shown them to you in some of the other presentations that we've done. Definitely lots of amazing orange that will go with your, your thread collections. So this one is the gemstone here. And let's just take a peek at the gemstone. I'm, is that the gemstone? So that's the gemstone, what it would look like finished. In the quilt kit, you would get all the fabric that I held up. And then you also get the pattern and a cool swag bag that I'll share with you in a moment. And the, there's also videos that go along with this particular program that have been put together by Free Spirit. And they feature different celebrities talking about color selection, block placement, as well as technique. So. It is a fabulous, fabulous, fabulous program, all about color, all about fun. The block is super simple to put together. All of this amazing fabric, $189.99. It's a great value. I don't have the uh, full retail value, but this is an amazing price for all of the fabric that you get. You will need to add your backing along with that. The other fabric, or we have a the bag that we have to show you. I have the bag here and it features the different color stories available and Frank's going to show you what that particular bag looks like up close. It's great for holding all of your goodies along the way. And the other color story I want to share with you today is the Scarlet. So the Scarlet, I have this gorgeous stack here. And the big difference between the Gemstone and the Scarlet is the sashing. Okay, so it's the colors on the bottom. There's a lot of crossover between the two. So it's, let's look at what the finished quilt is going to look like. And you can see that that sashing really makes a difference and really changes. That Scarlet has a much different feel to it. We also have a kit or two left of the Delft. And Frank's gonna pull that up for us. It is a blue color story and is really beautiful as well. I gravitate towards those reds and oranges when I work with CAFE. So I'll be making ours out of one of those. We'll be featuring our Patchworks original content as well as the Free Spirit provided content for our program. So I can't wait to get started with that next week. Other amazing things that came into the shop, if you didn't see it, are the Solar Flare Quilt Kit, which is a foundation pieced kit. So the paper piecing that we have been doing with our animals has been pretty intense. There have been lots and lots and lots of pieces. A paper piece project like this, and let's look overhead and see if we can get it without too much glare. Okay, so the cool thing about this is that there's simply a block. And then we're, we work at different fabrics that we go with it, but we the way that you get these really unique shapes here is by doing paper piecing. And that way you don't need to worry about any of the bias on there. And it goes together pretty slick. These are put together with True Colors fabrics. Even if you have the whole True Colors collection, the only way to get the pattern is through this kit. We have just a few more available. They just came in last week. And it makes a spectacular quilt. So... If you wanted to make use different fabrics as well, you absolutely could and just save the true colors for a different project. 
Lots of amazing things are still coming into the shop. We have expanded our sale area yet again, added more and more stuff on there. I've had a few people come in and just say, but I was just here yesterday and you've added more. And yes, we have. We have so much great stuff coming in that we just want to be able to share some great values with you so that you can take them home. We do have some great stuff online that you can check out that we'd be more than happy to ship out to you as well. We have one final trivia question for all of you who have hung out with us all night tonight. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. And the question is, who is the designer of the awesome color tools that we have here in the shop? So we have the spectacular studio color wheel and the ultimate three in one color tool, which are great tools for any quilter that is looking to build their color skills. Good luck to you. As always, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We will make sure to answer questions, add in links and posts along the way. Feel free to call us. And if you were interested in joining any of these clubs, let us know. I had the pleasure of talking to uh, Angelica earlier this week and it was so awesome to be able to hook her up with a custom subscription for multiple clubs. And we can get you started mid-year, no problem. And we can arrange it if you want to just prorate your subscription or if you wanted to start from the beginning, we can make it work for you and your budget. Thanks so much for joining us. Have a great night, happy quilting, and we'll see you soon.